Hello, thank you for joining me today. This is Corey from the Bounce Scholar YouTube channel. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and uh, this is a, a video that uh, I've been sort of planning for maybe just a few days now, or maybe about a week. I've been thinking that uh, you know I need it's I need to make a video that addresses my critics. Okay, so I've been on YouTube now for 13 years since 2008. It's a very long time. YouTube was invented in 2005. The first videos started coming out in 2006, and I joined the YouTube community in 2008. So I've been doing this a long time. And through my journey over those years in YouTube, uh, that by the way, it's 2021, October, as I make this video, so I've been on YouTube for 13 years now. And I, I think it it's, um, comes with the territory that with somebody of my um, exposure, I guess, my world fame, I guess I, I could say, that there's always going to be uh, people bad-mouthing me and talking bad about me and trashing me here and there. Well, you know, I, I thought it was time that I addressed the critics and defended myself and did some explanations to sort of just to uh, sort of justify myself or redeem myself in front of the critics. So first of all, if you go over to uh, Piano Street, the website Piano Street, where they have a big, uh, very active blog there, you can go on the blog, simply type in Box Scholar Piano Street. Oh, my God, you'll be, you'll, you'll have a field day there. You can read probably at least 10 pages of trash talking people, <laughs> just bad, everything bad about Bach Scholar, about me. You'd think I was a psychotic nutcase who can't play the piano, who's a phony, who steals recordings, who steals compositions. You know, I, I, there's nothing good <laughs> at all, nothing good about me on there. You'd think that I was the worst, you know, the, just the lowest of the low if you go over to Piano Street and just type in Box Scholar, go to Google, type in Box Scholar Piano Street, read, just read at your heart's content. You will be amazed at what you see there. Also, uh, Piano World. Piano World is another one. It's a big, big, huge piano blog kind of site. Uh, type in Box Scholar Piano World, just read at your heart's content. I think I found a German channel or a, a German blog somewhere that trash talks me for pages and pages. I, in, you know, in a way it's sort of flattery. It's flattering because I think I, <laughs> these people are giving so much attention to me. They, they spend so much time trying to bad mouth me and trash talk me and you know, you know, you'd think, like I said, you'd think I'd be a psychotic nutcase, but I'm, I'm none of those things. I'm none of those things. And this video is a video in which I'm going to explain myself and justify myself and try to redeem myself so I can, you know, sort of get on with my life and, and not have these haters uh, keep saying these things that aren't true about me. <clears throat> First of all, First and foremost, uh, I need to explain the Appassionata Sonata, okay, the Appassionata and also Ravel's Gaspard, Gaspard de la Nuit by Ravel and Beethoven's Appassionata Sonata. I have uh, some uh, recordings on my channel, on the Box Scholar channel, of me playing these, these works in the 80s. Okay, when I was really young, like in my 20s. I'm 58. As I speak, I'm 58 now, okay? So uh, I went through school, I did my bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctoral degree, all that stuff. I taught part-time as an adjunct at a, at a college, actually at two colleges, uh, before I began my own business, uh, teaching music and creating the uh, well-rounded pianist uh, tutorial site, subscription website, and um, putting time into books and publications. 
So I have a, a long life. I have a very long life before YouTube. Okay, so for those of you out there that are very young, you, YouTube is all you have known. But there was a time when there was no YouTube. Okay, YouTube didn't exist in these days. Okay, so back to my point. If you go on some of these uh, blog sites where my, my haters are trash talking me, they all are 100% convinced that I stole that Appassionata Sonata recording because I, I don't play like that anymore on YouTube. And basically, the, the one thing I don't do is I, I don't play that fast anymore. So it only comes down to speed. I'm a much more mature and better musician now than I was 35 years ago or so when I made those recordings, or over 35 years ago. And I'm a much more mature musician now, and of course I don't play that fast anymore, and I'll explain the reasons for that in a few minutes, why I don't, why I play everything so slow, why I play everything slower than everyone else. So because I play things slower than everyone else now on YouTube, and people just can't find me playing really fast, uh, I'm not a speed demon, they think that this recording of the Appassionata I put up from 1987 is fake. I stole that from somebody. They said, that can't be me. That can't be Bach Scholar. He could not possibly play like that. If he could do that, why doesn't he just sit down today and do it? <laughs> that, that is a joke. And I'll explain to you why that's a joke. Well, that's a joke because and back, back in my teens and 20s and even into my early 30s, I was practicing five hours a day. When I was in school, when I was working on my bachelor's and master's degree in piano, I was practicing five, six hours a day, every day. I didn't have a job back then. You know, I had maybe a little part-time part -time jobs here and there, but I was a professional student who all I would do is practice all day long. And that Appassionata Sonata recording, which I'm very proud of, by the way, I played in my, my first year at the Eastman School of Music, working on my Master of Music degree there. And it came from a very warped cassette. I, had, I found the cassette somewhere, it was all warped, but I uploaded it to YouTube several years ago. And then I get all this critique that, oh, it can't possibly be me because I can't play that fast. You know, if I could do that, why don't I do that anymore? Well, the reason is that the days of me practicing five and six hours a day are over. Okay, they've been over for like uh, probably at least 15 or 20 years now. So um, when I was practicing six hours a day, every day for a full year, that's how I got that appassionata so good and so fast and so clean and so perfect. That, that's because I was a practice-aholic. I put a lot of time into it. I am no, I'm, I'm no prodigy. I'm no I was no child prodigy. I had to work hard at what I achieved. This is why I get offended when my detractors or haters or critics claim that oh, this can't possibly be me, I was cheating, uh, I stole that recording from somewhere. Well, I'm just going to show you here, just to set it straight. This, I, I went into my closet and dug out uh, all my old files, and I happened to find this uh, program where I played the Appassionata. I played, uh, this comes from, yeah, February 18th, 1987, played at the Howard Hansen Hall in the Eastman School of Music. It's a very nice little hall. I played two Scarlatti Sonatas. I played the Appassionata Sonata in entirety, and then I played Prokofiev's sixth Sonata, Sonata number six here. Now, I would have uploaded that, so that, that shows you right there. That's proof. This, this is from 1987. Okay, now, on that warped cassette, the cassette that just sat there and got warm and got warped. 
I thought the Appassionata Sonata was, you know, was, I mean, quality-wise on the cassette, it, it, was, um, it wasn't that bad. It was warped, but it wasn't that bad. Then I went back, uh, maybe a couple years after that, and I tried to, uh, I, I was actually planning on uploading my Prokofiev Sixth Sonata, which was a fantastic performance. I played the Prokofiev Sixth just as good as I played the Appassionata back in 1987. I, I'm really proud of that recording. I'm proud of this recital, and I'm really mad that it was on a warped cassette that, that's just gone pretty much now. I wasn't able to upload the Prokofiev Sixth Sonata because it um, it, it was just too bad. It was really warped. I mean, it was two times more warped sounding than the Appassionata. I think it was on the other side. So anyway, that's proof right there. This piece of paper, this, this recital program, it's proof that that's me. I did not steal that Appassionata recording. Now, uh, the Gaspard de la Nuit, I also hear, oh, he plays Gaspard, he plays Scarbo, Andine. Oh, well, why can't he do it now? Well, if I practiced six, five or six hours a day, I probably would. But like I told you, and I'll explain a few minutes later, those days are, have been over for a long time. I, I'm lucky if I get 30 or 40, 45 minutes a day now of practice. My, my, goal in life is not to practice for an hour hours and hours a day anyway let me get to this program here <clears throat> i played this is from my senior recital at california state university sacramento this comes from 1985 1985 april 1985 okay i played on my senior recital program, I played the Bach, Bassoni, Chaconne, and D minor. I played the Gaspard de la Nuit by Ravel, all three movements. And then after the intermission, I played the uh, Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini, the whole thing with my piano professor playing the second piano. So it's a very large program. So by the time I was a senior in college, I was already playing big programs like this. and. Uh, the reason why I don't just sit down and play Gaspard de la Nuit now uh, is that I, those days of practicing five and six hours are over. Okay, you can't play this kind of virtuoso music, this or the Appassionata or Prokofiev Six Sonata or whatever. You can't play those things, you know, up to speed, perfectly polished, memorized, unless you're really putting in hours a day of practice. Those days are over. And now I want to explain to you why those days are over. Well, life, you know, life goes on. <laughs> you, you, you learn from things and life goes on and your life changes as you go on. I started playing piano when I was uh, six, going on seven. I remember, in fact, I, my first piano lesson was uh, one month before I turned seven. And like I told you before, I'm no, I was no prodigy. I was no child prodigy. I think I was pretty talented as a child. I wanted lessons. I wasn't forced to have lessons. I, I had a good talent for music, and I had a hard drive to practice a lot. But by no means was I a prodigy. I was not that at all. I had to work hard. And uh, in a future video, actually, I'm going to go over my recital programs. So, so you can, uh, I have a stack here of some of my old, old recital programs. Uh, you've seen two of them already, but I'll go over some other ones in a, in a future video in this series. But I want to talk, talk to you about how life goes on and it uh, sort of deals you cards that uh, you don't, you can't plan everything that's going to happen in your life. So anyway, I begin piano lessons at the age of seven, six going on seven. I go through school. I take piano lessons all those years through high school. I major in piano, uh, get my bachelor's degree in piano. You know, you saw my senior recital. I played the Gaspard. You know, I 
Um, I think at that time I was obsessed with uh, um, Evo Pogorelic's new recording of that, and also the Prokofiev VI. That's, that's why I learned Gaspard and Prokofiev VI, because my, my idol at that time, or the one I looked up to, was Evo Pogorelic. I had his, his recording from the, from the early 80s or so, and I really I, I loved it, and I, I obsessed over it, and that's why I learned Gaspard and Prokofiev VI. I wanted to play them just like Evo Pogorelic. Okay, then uh, this is, you know, I'm young and naive. I'm like, uh, you know, 20, 21, you know, practicing six hours a day, trying to, trying to be like Ivo Pogorelli. Okay, so you, you can see the drive. Young, young kids like that, especially males at that age, have a drive. I was driven. So, you know, I was accepted to the Eastman School of Music. I went there, uh, did my master's degree. Then I took three years, taught piano in Germany. Then I went to the University of Kansas and did my doctoral degree. And then uh, about 14 years later, YouTube was invented. So I jumped on the YouTube bandwagon in 2008 and started making videos. Now, by about, by about that time, I was still practicing a lot. I mean, I was practicing several hours a day in the early YouTube days. Then around 2012, uh, I, um, I got married and there started to be other people in the house. I wasn't single anymore. So that's another thing. When you're single and you can practice six hours a day, there's a hell of a lot you can do. You don't have any responsibilities. Then in 2012, I started to have all these responsibilities and had to work more. and. So um, I'm, you know, yeah, this might sound like excuses. Like, well, yes, I don't play the Appassionata or Ravel's Gaspard anymore because I haven't been able to practice barely more than 45 minutes a day for the last many years. Okay, every once in a while, I'll get a big block of time where I can work on something, but it's very rare that I even get to work on anything. And that's why, that explains why my YouTube videos have been, usually my, my typical YouTube videos, three or four minutes, perhaps five minutes, six at the most. That's all the time I have to work on something. And for the past few years, I've been using music. I don't memorize anymore because I simply do not have the time anymore. I am so busy with my professional life now, I just can't, I barely have any time to practice anymore. So I, I, I think, yes, okay, if I, if I could set aside, you know, six months, <laughs> six months to a year with at least five hours a day of practice, I, you know, I probably could easily, you know, I could make my, my detractors or haters very happy and I, I would spend all that time, you know, relearning the Appassionata Sonata and play it just like I did in 1987. I would do Gaspard de la Nuit just like I did in 1985. But that's not happening. That's just not happening. And here's why. The reason why is because I have a lot of things on my plate right now. Really, the only three things that are important to me in my professional life are my teaching of piano students on Skype, which I've been doing now for um, going into my 10th year now, full-time piano lessons on Skype to individual students. The second thing is, is operating and maintaining and adding new content to the Well-Rounded Pianist, which is my subscription website. I put a lot of time and effort into that. And my books, the Box Scholar books, which uh, now number 36. I have 36 titles in the Box Scholar series, and here they are in this big stack on my desk. The, that I've only done in four years. Did you know it took me a whole year to write sight reading and harmony? I did almost nothing else, no other books, in that time, it took me a whole year to write sight reading in harmony. 
It took me a whole year to finally finish my 436 four-part corrals. Then I have little smaller projects along the way. So my days are filled up with making, uh, editing and preparing books, which is usually at least four hours a day. I spend on an average of four hours a day editing and preparing books for Box Scholar Publishing, four hours a day. That If I didn't do that, if I didn't do these books and I didn't have Box Scholar Publishing, I could spend those four hours practicing piano. But that's not happening because uploading videos to YouTube is not making me any money. Okay, I, I have to make a living. Okay, playing the Appassionata Sonata for my detractors or haters to, to prove that I can play the Appassionata Sonata, that doesn't make me money. That takes hours and hours a day for many months. Okay, so that's not happening. That's why I'm not playing the Appassionata Sonata anymore, because I just, I'm out of practice. I'm not like I was in 1985 or 1987. I have all these other things on my, on my plate. So I teach students on Skype probably an average of four to five hours a day on most days. I spend at least four hours a day, sometimes even more, on my books, editing and preparing books for Box Scholar Publishing. And then the rest of the time, uh, several hours a week, I spend on maintaining and operating the Well-Rounded Pianist website and also the Box Scholar website. The Box Scholar website doesn't take as much time to, uh, to maintain, but I spend a lot of time on the Well-Rounded Pianist website. Students all over the world learn from me, piano and theory and other aspects of piano. So you can see my days are filled to the brim with doing all of these, these educational things because I think that's my mission in life now. My mission in life now is not to practice hours and hours a day and to, to prove to everyone in the world how fast I can play and to play Chopin etudes as fast as humanly possible and to play the Appassionata Sonata like I did in 1987 or Ravel's Gaspard like I did in 1985. That's not important to me anymore. That's simply not important. I, I have my days filled with my professional activities. This is what I do and this is what I love doing. So I don't want this to sound like an excuse. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like, well, I can't play the Appassionata anymore, so I'm gonna use this as an excuse. No, yeah, I told you, this is, you know, you need hours and hours every day to play this kind of music. That kind of virtuoso music takes time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. So if you take, uh, if you take people who you're trying to compare me with, and that's another thing I don't like is everything's a competition. You're always trying to compare everyone to everyone. So I upload a performance of a Chopin etude and I play it slow, okay? And then, and then people are saying, well, you can't play it fast. Well, it's no, I, I can play it fast. I just need more time, but I don't have the time. So I spend one day on a Chopin etude. I upload like a half speed performance or whatever in one day's time. I didn't spend hours and hours a day playing it. So those those people who, who claim that I'm terrible and I can't play it fast need to think again and they need to start looking at the whole picture. Understand that I am 58 years old, I'm not 21 anymore or 23 or whatever. I have a life, I have several many projects in Box Scholar Publishing I'm working on. I'm working on a whole children's book children's music book series. I'm working on an adult method book series. Um, the Well-Rounded Pianist, I upload new material every week for that. And I maintain a studio of about 40 students a week teaching on Skype. Now, 
for all of those. Uh, take take uh, other performers on YouTube, the hotshot performers that are uploading all the Chopin etudes and, and, and up to speed and doing this and doing that. Do they have all these projects they're doing? Do they spend four hours a day writing books? Do they have 40 piano students every week? <laughs> Do they have a subscription website they, they have to maintain every week and upload new content? No, they don't. All they're doing is, all they're doing is making YouTube videos. And the famous concert pianists of the world, like the Murray Pariahs, the Valentina Lasitsas, the um, Ashkenazis, although he's retired now, you know, performers of that stature, George Lee, people, you know, performers like that, they pretty much all they do is give concerts and practice. They practice hours a day, every day, and they give concerts. They don't make books, they don't teach 40 students a week, and they don't have a subscription website. Okay, so I'm redeeming myself here. I'm redeeming myself, I'm making it very clear as to why I play things slower now because I don't have enough time to practice and I have other things on my professional plate. So I hope that this sets everything straight. I hope that by seeing this recital program here that you know that my Apostionata Sonata was not stolen, I did not steal it, that was me. That was Corey Hall in the flesh playing the Apostionata Sonata. That was Corey Hall in the flesh playing Ravel's Gaspar de la Nuit. That was me, and I don't care if I can't do that anymore. That's not important. That really, that's my former life. I really don't care if I ever even touch the Appassionata Sonata again. I really don't care. The only thing I care about is making educational material for Box Scholar Publishing, maintaining and uh, make, continuing to grow the Well-Rounded Piano subscription website where I can teach students all over the world, and maintaining my piano studio where I currently have uh, roughly 40 students a week. That's all I care about. I don't care about showing off and uploading virtuoso piano music and trying to prove to everyone how great I am. So you need to go over to Piano Street, read some of these just hilarious, hilarious uh, anecdotes about uh, Bach Scholar there go to Piano World, read some there, and ask yourself, is this really true? Let, I mean, have you ever seen anything so ridiculous as to, to if you read all that, you'd think I was a mass murderer psychotic who doesn't play the piano, who steals my recordings, who can't do anything, who's a total loser. So I challenge you, if you haven't seen it yet, just go over to Piano Street and have a field day there reading all, of, all the stuff they say about me, which is just not true, and it's not substantiated at all. So anyway, thank you for letting me get worked up today, and um, join me in another one of these videos. I'm going to go over my recital programs that I dug up from my closet here. I can just show you some of my other programs that I played back in my, my performing days, back when I was practicing many hours a day. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sitting through this video, if you sat through the whole thing. And um, until we meet again.